it's on six, working ahead. But we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a uh, deep dive boom. on our guest Instagram. Hello, everyone's up here. So, you want to learn Goyo? Great! Welcome to my Goyo Operator Guide. Goyo is a two-armor, two-speed DLC defender. Pretty good! Who has been added in Operation Amber Rise, along with Amber Rush and the long-awaited Canal Rework, which made admired Civilization players around the world very happy. Goyo's gadget, the mixtape, Have you ever met a girl that you tried to date? Allows him to build, build a wall, wall and bomb, bomb the, the shit, shit out, out of them. them. It's true. And by them, I mean the attackers. And also defenders. And the hostage. That's a lot of damage. Let us take a closer look. Goyo's gadget is a deployable shield with a gas canister on his back. That one shot explodes the shield in a spectacular fashion, dealing damage to everyone close to it. It also leaves a large fire around it for 10 seconds, dealing damage over time to everyone that stands in it, similar to how Capitao's firebolts work. And damn it, I really have to remake that Capitao guide. Uh, anyway, Goyo's gadget also explodes after being destroyed by conventional means, such as explosives, Maverick's torch, sledges... sledge, and standing on it, you fat f Since it is just a regular gas canister, it cannot be detected by IQ's electronics detector, disabled by Thatcher's EMP, or damaged by Twitch's drone for some reason. But they can be detonated by Maestro's evil eye lasers, making them quite a deadly combination. You know what else is a deadly combination with Goyo? Capkin. Just put a Capkin trap on the doorway where Goyo's shields are put, and that makes for quite a dead attacker. Move over, Thatcher and Thermite. There's a new ship in town. However, there's one problem with that combo, and let me tell you what it is. Since Goyo's shields can be destroyed just like regular shields, putting more gadgets near Goyo's shields may make them more vulnerable to attackers that would spend their resources on destroying a deployable shield, but probably wouldn't notice a gadget right next to it. And while Capkin traps are very easy to notice, something like a Legion trap is much harder to see. But it can be a very satisfying combo to pull off, if you do manage to do it. It's just that these moments very rarely happen, that's all. Other than that combo, the best way to use Goyo's shields is as an area denial tool to prevent attackers from using a certain pathway for a while, similar to smoke or castle, but a little bit more vulnerable. This can be used to completely block entrances to the objective. Another way to use those shields is to place them in common plant spots to discourage attackers from planting there. This, in my experience, is the best way to use Goyo's shields, since it gives just enough time for the defenders to react to attacker pushes. If attackers manage to destroy these shields early, then roamers have enough time to return to the objective while the fire is blocking the attackers. That is, if your roamers actually care about the team, so... <laughs> I need some doggone hell! I need help defending this- HELP! HELP ME! If the shields are not destroyed, however, and someone tries to plant near one, you can detonate the shield, quite effectively preventing the plan. The situation may not always play out in your favor, however, so try to not get too fixated on those shields and try to prevent the plant first and foremost. The third method to use those shields is to just use them as regular deployable shields, but putting them a bit further away, so in case they get destroyed, you don't get hurt by your own gadgets. That turns them into an effective cover that allows you to defend in much more advantageous positions than you previously would have. And if you have better cover, that means that you can fight your enemies on what are essentially your terms. How well can Goyo fight though? Let's look at his loadout to find out. And it's really, really good. For his weapons, Goyo has access to the Vector SMG and the TCSG shotgun. Yes, two of the strongest weapons on defense on the same operator. Also, ACOG on a two-speed. So basically, um, what I was thinking of was, um, oh fuck. Yeah. Don't ask me why you decided this was a good idea, I'm not a game designer. That does make Goyo extremely satisfying to play and gives him options to act as either an anchor or a roamer on basically any map. Small map? Grab the vector. Long map? Grab the shotgun. This map? Grab him by the put. When you use the vector, you take on a role of a wrangler, and the vector is the bolt that you're trying to control. It has an absolutely ludicrous rate of fire and is therefore a headshot machine. But unlike the other fast-firing SMGs, 
it actually has quite the controllable recoil, so you don't have to be a diamond level player to properly use it. Just remember that it barely deals any damage with body shots. For attachments, I would recommend always using the compensator and the vertical grip. Muzzle brakes and flash hiders effectiveness is quite limited on such a fast firing weapon, and everything else kinda sucks. If you decide to use the shotgun DMR, I would recommend holding long angles with the ACOG and try to hold down attackers that try to enter from a certain way. I personally prefer the Vector more, but the shotgun can be amazing if you need to create rotations on site or if you are subscribed to Coconut Bra. For attachments, it's obvious, vertical grip and the ACOG. There is no other option when using this thing. Did I mention that Goyo is a two-speed with an ACOG? Because Goyo is a two-speed with an ACOG. The guy has the two weapons in the game that are balanced around the fact that only three armors have access to them. But that was my thing. For his secondary, he has access to the Japanese P225. It's alright, never had the opportunity to use it properly since you easily melt your opponents with your primary weapons anyway. Put a muscle break on it, I guess that would work. For his secondary gadgets, Goyo has access to the Nitro Cell and the Impact Grenades. If you use the TCSG, you won't need the impact, but they can be a viable option with the vector to both make rotations on the objective and to make daring escapes if you decide to roam. But the Nitro Cell is absolutely amazing for fragging and killing opponents from the safety of your cover, which you have plenty of with your shields. And if push comes to shove, you can also use your C4 to prevent attackers from planting, if your shields got destroyed by her, making Goyo a great alternative to smoke. Wait, fuck! Boom. Goyo's role in team. Is he a fragger? Is he a support op? Is he an anchor? Is he a roamer? Like, uh, what is he? Well, he is really all of those things. His loadout and gadget allow him to do a lot of things all at once, so there is very little issue with him being a good fit in a team. In fact, I would say that Goyo is one of the most generalist operators in the game. The kind of character who you would want to have in any round, really. He can have an ACOG or a fast firing SMG, he can use his shields as either cover or area denial depending on the needs of the team and the proficiency of the player, obviously. And the roles that Goyo can fill may vary from round to round by a lot, but that in and of itself brings a separate issue. Who would play as Goyo? Well, as Goyo isn't too popular in the lower ranks and he still hasn't received the harsh treatment of the Yubi Nerf Hammer, you can play as him with very high effectiveness, even if you don't do anything fishy with the gadget. Once again, ACOG on a two-speed. What is he for, by the way? But what if you do want to try out something cool and interesting with Goyo? Are there any strats in particular that you should have in mind? Well, there you are. Number one, treating Goyo as a second smoke can be a very effective way of using him. Waiting until the attackers start pushing from somewhere and then denying their entrance with your gadget can be very useful, especially since your arsenal as a Goyo player is... well... Ay, 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 ay. Yeah. In the same vein, number two, putting shields in common plant spots is an incredibly efficient way of wasting utility and time, as the attackers will be severely discouraged from planting near Goryo shields, and they will have to destroy them beforehand. And if they don't, well, uh, yeah, let's just say it won't look pretty. But what if you don't want to babysit the common plant spots, or if you aren't even playing on bomb, well, then I would recommend, number three, place shields as you would a regular deployable shields. That turns them into great covers that your teammates can use to avoid being shot from certain angles. But remember that they deal damage to everyone when destroyed, so try to place them a bit further away from where you would expect your teammates to hold. That is definitely not the most effective way to use Goyo shields, but certainly useful to know on certain objectives, like consulate first floor lobby. If you don't doubt your skills and in fact have better map knowledge than average, you can also try to number 4, place your shields in places where they can be destroyed by shooting at them from above or below. While this may backfire against a more competent team with a good buck or sledge, 
More often than not, players don't really play vertically, and even players that do aren't exactly good at it. So you'll be fine. Try to walk around in custom games and look where you may put down the shields for maximum effectiveness. Some minute things that may also affect your shield placement are the fact that you can create chain reactions with exploding shields. This may not come into play as often as you would like, but you can make some really cheeky plays with this. All this disgusting does put into question though. Would it be better to place shields into easy to reach places or more secure places? Would you want to be more aggressive or passive with the placement of the shields? Personally, I would recommend placing them more aggressively in the beginning of the game as you become more familiar to your opponent's style of play. If your opponents are really good at getting rid of your agility, then you may be more inclined to place them more conservatively. But if you still want to be aggressive with your shield placement, you might want to ask for help from some of your teammates in protecting your shields. Someone like Jaeger or Mai, who can prevent the enemy from using their explosives to get rid of the shields, or someone like Bandit or Kaid, who can electrify your shields to make them more resilient to the ashes of the world. And speaking of energy with Bandit or Kaid, you can also place down your shields next to high traffic reinforcements to slow down attackers after they made holes in them. That way, your roamers have more time to return to the objective and try to repel the attacker's assault from this new entrance. I unfortunately don't have clips showcasing such accidents happening, as I always play with the best team ever, and I am an amazing player against any sort of petty termites and hibans of the world. Yep, absolutely perfect. No mistakes ever made. Other than those operators, Goyo can mesh quite well with smoke. With both of them on the table, you can deny a single entrance for as long as 40 seconds. That's a lot. Goyo also synergizes very well with ACOG wielders, who can detonate his shield from much safer distances than most defenders. And especially Maestro, who can just channel his Italian genes and delete his enemies from a distance using his remote team of mafiosi. Also known as Evil Eyes. Same idea with mirror windows. Placing shields in the line of sight of mirror windows can discourage attackers from pushing there even further. Just remember to let your teammates know where you are going to place down those shields if you will place them in some random spots. You wouldn't want to have a castle situation where you place down a shield and it ends up doing more harm than good. Speaking of castle, he also synergizes very well with Goyo, since both of them work amazingly well when it comes to burning attacker utility. Bruh. You can place Goyo shields right next to castle barricades to further slow down attacker pushes from those areas, or alternatively you can spread out your gadget further apart, to make sure that no matter where attackers are going to come from, they will have to waste their resources either way. This is why it is also important to know how to use Castle. Castle Guide Plug, seriously, it is one of my better videos in terms of raw tips that I give. It's extremely underrated, but yes, guys, go watch! In the meantime, I would like to point out that Goyo has some of the best weapon choices in the game for any playstyle. So you can either anchor or roam, depending on your own personal preferences and what your team doesn't have enough of. Goyo is versatile like that. I give him 4 tamales out of 5. He is an amazing operator that anyone can play and enjoy, but because of how strong he is, he will probably get nerfed to shreds very, very soon. For now though, enjoy yourselves while playing as him, as he is one of the best operators you could buy on defense right now. Except for maybe Lisha. But even that's debatable. Thank you very much for watching my video, I hope you have learned something from it. If you did, leave a like, comment, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. If you are more interested in guides of a similar nature, click on the eye icon in the top right corner to check out some of my other Siege content. Also, please don't look at my upload history. Yo, what? <laughs> What's up, everyone? It's your boy Post Production Zevi here, here with an extra section of the video. Uh, yeah, the first one for this channel. So instead of making a separate update video, I'm I, I just thought about you know, considering my upload schedule. Might as well just plug in any updates at the end of the any future videos. That way. I won't have to rely on people reading my channel feed or Twitter feed for any channel updates. Well, the last semester in 2019 in general was very, very wild for me personally. Um, I'm finishing my fifth semester at college and uh, I actually got my very first paid internship, so I, I'm incredibly excited right now. Oh, fuck. Yeah, anyway, a lot more spare time. I, paid internship, I can actually make money, and yeah, I actually have my own quote-unquote studio apartment, it is actually provided by the company, but uh, let's not talk about this. Anyways, you guys can easily expect more videos in the future, but I'm not so sure about the state of the channel after the semester actually starts, but I do have an approximate idea 
Uh, so what I'm thinking is about making more frequent update videos and minor content videos rather than my regular Siege content, which is basically video essays and operator guides. I mean, those things are very fun to make, not gonna lie, but they aren't going to keep my channel alive. And I definitely will have to make more videos, because, I mean, that's what you guys are subscribed for. So, yeah, more, C more Siege content it is. I will try to upload at least one video weekly, and this might be a bit more diluted with subpar content when it when the next semester is going to start. But for now, the only thing that I have on my plate is my internship, so... Yeah, not that big of a deal. I mean, it still takes up a lot of time, like from like 8 a.m. from 8 p.m. easily on the weekdays. But I mean, I still have my weekends, so I can work on my videos then. In the meantime, I just want to tell you guys thank you very much for being patient with me for so long, and you can expect more videos in the future. I promise. And don't forget, communication is key. Good luck, have a nice day.